Right, welcome back. Last time we started going down the political tree, though I haven't gone down all the way. And we're almost done with the naval tree. We also finished the air tree as well. There's not actually that many foci left. At the very least, it's starting to reduce in quantity. Yeah, we started going down India. At least along this path, because I noticed there weren't many troops here, so if I were quick, I should be able to push. Plus, the terrain's a lot easier than how it is over here, which is lots and lots of forests, hills, and mountains. In India, it tends to be a lot flatter. Lots of plains. Sometimes deserts, but deserts aren't quite that bad, especially for, well, tanks. I've also decided to start sending the tanks this way. So, perhaps we'll get some uh, more troops over here. Probably start pushing again. On a hot summer day in July of 1924 in Guangdong, the first of all Guangdong Peasant Conference. The first all Guangdong Peasants Conference was held, in which thousands of peasants were invited to participate in the KMT's mass movement. Madame Sun Yat-sen, Sun Qingling, found herself moved to tears at seeing the masses march in their rags to experience in the pursuit of national salvation. Indeed, the late Eternal Premier remarked that the revolution's success begins with the people. The revolution is part of their duty to achieve liberation. Many years later, the National Revolution has reached its concluding stages. The Orthodox faction of the Chinese Syndicalist Party dominated the policy of the United Front with the League of Chinese Syndicalists. This alliance, the cooperation with the European Syndicalists, has led to the victory of the Chinese Revolution. None can stop the advance of the workers and peasants. Despite this, the country is still effectively under the control of the KMT. They organize unions and associations, and they are the elder sister in the relationship between the two parties. It remains to be seen whether or not this relationship will continue as it is now, whether or not the Chinese syndicalists will gradually find themselves absorbed into the larger KMT, or the KMT shall continue to see more of its principles diluted by the allure of syndicalism. Nonetheless, there is much to rejoice in the coming years. Long have the workers and peasants toiled and suffered by the establishment of capitalism, the imperialistic institution that has divided the country and brought it to ruin. With a revolutionary committee in charge, a committee made up of representatives of the workers and peasants, never again shall capitalism emerge in China. Together, hand in hand, a new socialist dawn rises in the East, with the Chinese proletariat leading as its proud vanguard, a partnership to last. And that is the setup for the future of China, which is outside the scope of Kaiserreich. Of course, there's still stuff to be done. I can continue working on the liberation of the world, hand on hand with the international. Plus, fight off Japan once again. Because, wow, they do not give up, do they? Ah, that was enough of the Princely Federation to capitulate. Gives me enough room to maneuver. A victory.
Go for this city. It might be enough to capitulate them, though I find that unlikely. Well, Bangkok is ours. Okay. There we go. Siam's also capitulated. Probably a good point to stop for now, maybe? I mean, it depends on how long the session's been going. Yeah, okay. So. Things are going pretty well, actually. The India push was the right decision. It definitely was. Especially bringing in tanks. I was able to just breeze on in. And as they were moving troops away in order to try to handle this, Area, several areas got weaker, got to the point where pretty much anyone could be naval invaded, and that's what happened. Naval invasions galore, <laughs> courtesy of the U.S. as well as Mexico. So, thank you, you two. <laughs> you did a great job. I'm also gone, gone through most of the focus tree at this point. Um, what's left is this stuff, which. I won't be able to do it without um, combat casualties starting to disappear, which it's not. It's going to need some time in between for that to work out. Now that I think about it, I probably should start setting up coastal garrisons in India. At least for the duration of the war. In order to prevent a naval invasion. I also need to start thinking about setting up for naval invasions in the future, because there's no other way to... Well, I don't actually need a setup for naval invasions. By their nature, the U.S. has consistently proved that they're very capable of this sort of thing. So I'm just going to set up... So they would probably be able to do all of that on their own. No trouble whatsoever. At this point, I'm just going through research. And trying to find places, good places to assign the factories that I've got. Sure, more trucks. I may motorize in the future. <laughs> my infantry, or... Mechanize some of my infantry in the future. So the legitimacy of the party has shifted to a party of peasants and workers. The party has finally been reorganized and is led by those who truly do bear the burdens of the National Revolution, the true proletariat. Under the leadership of the KMT, the peasants and workers have been organized so that they are able to stand strong and tall against imperialism and against domestic bullies. While the future of socialism very much lies in the future, we are hopeful that th through our socialist policies and our encouragement of class unity, that socialism will arrive and bring equality to the people once and for all. Yeah, there's not many folk I left. There's this one right here. Which three out of four paths for the um, PAC can do. Which is, yeah... But there's also these. I mean, I can't do Imperialism forever more crushed, but... Oh well. I mean, among other things, yeah. All this stuff requires more than 75% more support. Though I am at war with... You know... India and whatnot. Bypass these. <laughs> I probably will end up bypassing a lot of them because we're at war with almost the entire world, aren't we? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> there's still some leftovers of the Atom. Okay, yeah, there's a couple leftovers in the Atom. It's... France, the Kingdom of France, Morocco, and whatever is left of Portugal. Yeah. The Reichspark is a lot more put together. That's for sure. But I'm sure my allies will be able to pull through the naval invasions, especially if they get help and support from me. Really, all that's left is to sweep up these dregs and finalize how exactly we're going to do occupations for the time being. Eventually, go ahead and set up, well, for lack of a better term, puppets once the war is over with the co-prosperity sphere. Personally, though, I'm hoping for all of India and Indochina. That would be useful <laughs> to have. And possibly also Japan, although I might not be able to get the required stuff for it. But yeah, that's all for now. I mean, over here, things have stabilized for the moment, but supply is still extremely bad in these areas. I'm not sure why they are, but they just are. <laughs> Absolutely awful. I'm trying, but there's only so much I can do with that. Especially since, well, the Navy's starting to get contested. My basic Navy is actually pretty strong. But I do need to upgrade some things. Specifically, I believe I need to retrofit. Yeah, training cruisers. Need to be refitted into modern heavy cruisers. I'll just set those up and then call it a session. Though that's going to eat through my iron for a while, <laughs> my steel. I guess I can buy a bunch off of Italy for a while. Shouldn't be too big of a problem. Yeah. Built a couple of radar stations too, because why not? So let me see everything that's going on in certain areas. Even if it's just intel, intel is kind of useful. In a lot of situations. Yeah, okay. That should be good for now. I'll see you again next time. Until then, bye. Didn't get through as much this session as we did last session, but... Rapid Warfare does that. <laughs>